11 games undefeated and it was a dominant win over in form Plymouth. Just don't look at the league table. <laughs> Dave, do you want to tell the listeners what happened when I tried to do my open then a second ago? And I have to say, I did it brilliantly. What happened? Yeah, I had the phone ping alert on my phone. <laughs> However, in my defence, um, my eldest son is about to become a father at any minute. So oh, um, he's, I, th- I think, to be fair, that I need a pass, there, Craig, I need a pass get, on that. Get to ring the, land, get heartless, heartless, the landline. Heartless, landline Dave. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's absolutely buried me on that one. Good morning, yeah. David Diamond. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Craig. How are you doing, Craig? Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Um, weather was nice, wasn't it? Spring had oh. sprung momentarily. Oh. It's a bit bit uh, more forlorn this morning, but uh, yeah, it's good. Just a quick one. Does Kieran McKenna know anything about cricket? Oh, can we can we get him over to the Caribbean? PDQ. Oh, I, thought, I, I see what you're saying there, Craig. See what you've done there. Yeah, I think we need some something to uh, to reset. We need something to reset our. Uh, our uh, long form of the game, don't we? We're done, what Ben. What on earth are you guys ben is talking just glazing about? over, isn't he? Look at it. What, We're done now, what is this nonsense? Right, let's give a shout out to um, Tristan Nidem, who's retired now. Um, and Craig, were you were you there at Notts County? I was. I was. I there. was. Yeah, you were there with yeah. Rich, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was in the I was in the opposite stand, which unfortunately meant <clears throat> I was far closer to the unfortunate event. Just. Dave, just one of those tackles where the two players arrive together um, and unfortunately if someone gets there slightly late, um, yeah, and he's never recovered, um, Tristan Nydam. And I I always liked him and I remember um, that sort of back end of that season, well, even predating Mick McCarthy leaving, Nydam would get dripped in and Flynn Downs, obviously Andre Dizel, and then right towards the end of that season uh, when McCarthy uh, left and Brian Klug took the team, Nydam was sort of one of the... I, I always think us fans try and judge a player, but it's always quite obvious when two or three different managers, when they've got lots of youngsters to choose from, choose the same guys. And um, what, what a shame, Dave. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah, I mean the injury itself was a what was it a double a double certainly a break and a dislocation and ligament. I mean it's horrific, horrific injury. I mean probably even worse than a well certainly a lot worse than an ACL, which is you know thought that you know players come back from that today. Very rarely such a young at such a young age does you know does an injury finish the in this day and age you know a career at such a young age. It was a it was a horrific one. And you're right, he was quite um. I mean, he's always funny. This, is a, this could, could be quite a good segue in a few minutes. Um, he was certainly always championed by Kieran Dyer as the one most likely to come through out of Downs and out of the Zell. And quite rightly, you say, you know, the former managers seem to um, seem to pick him. And I think he would have become a quite a versatile player because he could certainly play that left wing back. I think he could play further up on the left. And I also think he could play inside as well. Tough, tough little player. And I think he would have blossomed into a into a really good asset for us. And it's just a crying shame. And it it, it was sort of ironic that it broke. Joe broke the broke the news to us. That I think it broke last Sunday evening when we were doing the um when we were doing the pod last Sunday. So yeah, incredibly um incredibly sad news. And good luck to him. Whatever the future, you know, the future holds for him. Nice first touch, Craig. Low center of gravity, good ball carrier, like Dave says. When you've got. Those sort of sound like David Brent transferable skills. You can move around <laughs> various different different positions. What what do you suspect? Um, I think he had a chat with Andy on on um, one of our rival podcasts, but we're good friends with him. Um, what would you foresee um, going on now for Tristan Nydam? I think the club will look after him, won't they? They they tend to they'll probably find a pathway for him if he wants to go into coaching. Then you know, there are plenty of youth teams for him to help it help out in and, and things like that he was just a lovely little tenacious footballer wasn't he he was strong on the ball he was good in the tackle um as they said he was versatile he could play anywhere on the left and in the middle of midfield and he's young isn't he they were talking to i listened to suffolk on the way to or from yesterday and they were talking to Tariq back and he's younger than him 
they were saying, you know, yeah. Tyreek, you know, yeah. you must have, you know, appreciate at your age, at similar sort of age players having to retire already. And he's like you know, a few months younger than Backinson. We all think Backinson's a, a young player making his way in the game, and poor old Nightem's already had to had to jack it in. Yeah, horrific one, as you're saying. Quite a, just a, nothing, you know, not, nothing um, vindictive or anything in the tackle. No. It was just one of those. Yeah, yeah. R- Russian roulette sometimes, isn't it? Especially with those 50-50s. Craig, we've got a bit of a Kieran Dyer update because um, our friend, we mentioned Andy, we mentioned Stuart now, um, tweeted yesterday that uh, Kieran Dyer was at the game uh, having, um, well, should we say quit, the under 23s, um, under 23s gig, wearing a Humphreys 30 um, Ipswich away shirt. Um, I haven't seen this, so... Um, uh, this is uh, Stuart's um, Stuart's eyes, and you can. Um, I'm sure you will follow him on Twitter anyway. Could follow. Um, <laughs> talk to me about this choice of attire, then, Craig. Oh Christ! Thanks for that. Um, un- <laughs> un- <laughs> I-, I wonder how many times he'd worn it previously. Put it that way. I can't <laughs> imagine. I can't. I can't imagine you it's like it all, all bobbled and like moth eaten because he's been washed so many times. He wears it all the time when he's playing five a side up. Uh, up the up the sports ground. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it was really required, was it? I think it's unintentionally <laughs> provocative. It's quite interesting what Mick Mills said after the match yesterday was that he didn't really agree with Kieran's decision at all. You know, he said, yeah, sometimes you have to bite your tongue. Sometimes you know you can't be the the martyr for this um, cause that you've you've got um, going on because just suck it up, just do your job, and and see what happens. You know, you've got a lot of things going for you here. Sometimes you need to sort of just take a step back and and, uh, and appreciate that, which is quite an interesting take on on it. But obviously, Kieran sees it different. And I think you're right. You know, no matter what he's achieved in football, at England International, you know, Premier League in Newcastle, you know, good, a very good early career with us. It's just a, you know, despite what he's achieved, it's just another cog in the in the whole in the whole you know football um, Ipswich football organisation, is it? You know, it'll go on without Kieran Dyer. And I think I think Mick Mills is right, Craig. I think it's just a. Uh, it's a shame, really, that, he, that sometimes you just have to have to take it on the chin and get on with it. Um, yeah, I mean, there were a few things that came out of it. Obviously, the, his thoughts on the um, on the progression of the academy players, and I think also what um, you know what went on in that sort of caretaker role with John McGreal around. You know, just after obviously uh, Paul Cook left, I think that left a bit of a mark on him as well. So, yeah, yeah, again, I do. Under- I do yeah, understand sorry, that one. To be to be fair to the guy, I do, and me and Joe spoke briefly about it on Friday. Yeah. I do understand that part of it. In that he's already in the, in the building. The the temporary manager was only ever going to be a temporary two or mm. three game job. So to be overlooked for that from a guy who joined five days earlier or something like that must have been a bit of a kick in the guts for him. To be kick in the you knows, yeah, definitely. And Dave, when we had um, Kieran on the podcast, um, he was he he self confessed as an emotional an emotional guy and I think anyone who's read the books knows that there's there's been some damage earlier in life and perhaps you know some some yeah. you know some he's, he's admitted that himself I don't think I'm I'm being un, unfair then do you think this is something he might look back on and say oh that was you know I was em- emotional about about the club yeah. and you know that I, I I just wonder I remember him talking about the interview he gave out Oh, I'm going to stay at Ipswich, blah blah blah. And then when he actually sat down and thought about it, now I need to go to further my career. I, I think, and I, I respect the guy massively. And obviously, he came on the pod, so I'm not, I'm not taking a shot at him. But he, he is an emotional, um, emotional fella, isn't and he? And he is, and especially at this moment in time, my God, he's, he's awaiting. Let's face it, it's a life, exactly right. life changing operation for God's sake. You know, it's not. I mean, you're tonsil. He's, having a, you know, he's waiting a liver transplant for goodness' sake. So the the guy is. Um, he must be emotionally all over the place. In any event, you know. Um, no, it's a. Uh, you know, it's a shame. And as as Mick Mill said, sorry, keep referring back to that. Let's hope it doesn't sort of. He doesn't regret it. And well, let's look. Let's hope he hasn't. You know, who knows what the future holds? Let's, you know, he is such an Ipswich legend and an Ipswich lad, and he's Ipswich through and through. We all know that. Loves the club. Um, let's hope he hasn't completely closed the door on anything for him in the future with the club, perhaps. OK, just quickly so we can wrap this segment up. Just give me two word answer, Craig. A, a yes or a no twice. Um, will Will Bellamy have a job in the next year and will Bellamy open up the door for Dyer? No, he won't. Yes, he will. 
<laughs> Dave, I think he's gone for the um, I've gone for the impossible answer there. It's like the, it's a bit like the Vicar of Dibley. No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite. But but we suspect he might go and work for Bellamy if it would if would make job. sense there. Although it looks like Steve Morrison's got Cardiff fairly well tied up now for the next while, doesn't it? So um, we'll see how that pans oh, out. Well. Right. Um, we've done all the news and, um, well, well, we'll get into the prevailing mood of um, sort of frustration at this season, perhaps ending a, about six weeks too early for us. But a great win yesterday against Plymouth. But first, we're going to hear from our friends over at Favourite Chicken. With wings more crisp than a James Norwood finish, ribs meatier than a Sam Morty tackle, and chicken tastier than Wes Burns, Favourite is Britain's tastiest chicken. And as a listener of the Blue Monday podcast, you can get 20% off by entering BM20 at the checkout. Order direct from their menu at chicken-ipswich.co.uk. They'll deliver anywhere within a 2.7 mile radius of the store. And if you're not quite as local as the Bond family, you can click and collect. The store is located just off Hadley Road. Favourite, Britain's tastiest chicken. Just a quick one from me. Obviously, um, Dave and I started the podcast as, um, as a little bit of fun and it's grown and grown and grown and grown. Now, we do have commercial partners and we just want to say thank you, um, to people I know you're here for the football but thank you for the people who have gone and used the code and uh, it really does help our podcast um, grow so um, those people who have supported any of our partners we've had over the years is a big um, big thank you for us we know you're here for the football but this has kind of grown about three heads now since um, David and I sat down in our um, in in my spare bedroom uh, to do this Um, David so Ipswich versus Plymouth Plymouth are very good. They're in the top four. They'd won six straight games. They hadn't conceded a goal. Um, Ten wins in 12. They'd mitigated the loss of uh, Ryan Lowe, gone off to do the Preston job. Um, Jeff Cott, Hardy, good players, good team. Um, We don't win games like this, do we? No, no, we haven't. I mean, I guess we were helped somewhat yesterday that Camera and Jeff Cott were both um, absent for... I think both international reasons, I assume. Um, so that helped to be that helped to begin with. But um, yeah, I mean, of any team in the top six or the top ten, probably that they were the team going into yesterday with incredible momentum. Six on the spin, hadn't conceded a goal, just you know rolling teams over, creating chances, scoring goals. Um, yeah, a big game, and certainly as you alluded to, there a game in recent seasons where majority of which we just haven't, haven't uh, turned up just haven't yeah just underperformed really Craig we can be we can be churlish and uh, a lot of people do this don't they and say oh look at the opponents and look they played five home games out of six or whatever you can't argue with 10 wins in 12 can you <laughs> no that's right and you can't argue with the clean sheets either can you it wasn't just no. the fact that they were you know winning by 2-1 or 3-2 of the last gasp they were just keeping like we'll talk about in a minute, keeping teams at arm's length and not not um, giving away the chances as well. But uh, yeah, no, they were they were certainly the the form team as, as me and Joe spoke about on um, on Friday. We did wonder whether Guinea Bissau International Kamara would be uh, would be a loss because he was the guy that um, for those that went to the away match, he was the one that Morsey was deciding to have his running running yeah. battle with um, in the away match. So, yeah, he and to be fair to the guy, he stood up to Morsey as well. So, um, Jeff Cop, I don't think he's been starting too many games, but, yeah, I think Kamara was a bit of a miss in the middle. Um, sorry, let me just bring this up on the other screen. Apologies. Um, please do hit like over on YouTube <laughs> to, see me, um, to see me mess things up in the flesh. Dave, I'm trying to get the team up for you. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, let's just quickly bang through that Plymouth team. Uh, Cooper, a familiar one there. James Wilson, number five. A little bit, little bit sleepy at a very key moment in this game as well. Uh, Bolton, uh, Gillespie, Sessignon, Edwards, Randell, Houghton, Mayer. Hardy and Ennis, as you mentioned, a few um, big names out. So, Dave, for town, Walton in goal, Danassi and Wolfenden and Burgess, we think, for the foreseeable now. Burns Thompson, Morsi Backinson now is the pair. Um, and I suppose the most interest here, Aluko, Selina, Norwood. And we don't even have to be faux experts here, Dave, because Kieran McKenna told us exactly why James Norwood was playing in this game due to an ability to run in behind and, and yeah. lead the press. And yeah. being very wise after the event, it was a good call, Dave. 
I think I think so, and I think it was, and I think that um, considering that, you know the impact, well, it was a good call as you see it, but I think the, given the impact, although not necessarily a goal threat when he came on last week, that Bond had. I mean, and, and McKenna admitted after last last week's game at, um, at Oxford that Bond probably had his best, well, not quite forty five minutes, but forty minutes, whatever spell, you know, since he's been there, and he was great last week, wasn't he? You know, his hold up play was good. Like I said, must underline not a goal threat, but he was winning balls in the air, he was bringing players into play. Um, caveat, he wasn't running offside. Um, and I think, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm alone with this, so I fully expected Bond to start yesterday. So in the pub, in the greyhound, sort of get the team, blimey, you know, Norwood there with a Luco Salina, which I quite liked um, sitting behind him. So, yeah, a bit of a surprise, but... Um, yeah, I mean, as 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 everything pans out, you can see what the you can see what the manager's all about, can't you? Really, another sort of bespoke one. Then Craig, they're gonna sit in. Uh, not sit in. That's the wrong word. That's not fair on Plymouth. They're gonna um, d- drop off, play out from the back, play through, and the idea is get on top of them. And um, Nor- Norwood um, is the figurehead for that specific tactic. Yeah, to run in behind. Yeah. Um, and it's quite interesting, actually, is that, and it has proved through the, certainly for the first half, that their goalkeeper has made the most short passes in League One of all goalkeepers. And that you could tell that wow. from, you, by the way that they, um, the way they set up, he was, he was looking to play it short every time as, as we do in the main, to be fair. Um, but yeah, now it was interesting that McKenna said after the match, basically spelled out, McCauley Bond's always offside. Pretty much you know, <laughs> yeah. para- paraphrasing, paraphrasing yeah, he just, what he, he just stopped short of that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. paraphrasing what yeah. he normally says. That's what he, he getting and at. he did. He did say um, that quite interesting that Norwood's the closest we've got to Jackson. So if Jackson had been fit, right. he'd have been, he'd have been playing. Basically, is what he was saying as well. Interesting. Um, us podcasters have to be careful in situations like this where the teams played well. So hopefully, we've given. Uh, well, we've got a reputation over the years as being balanced, and we don't think that every single thing our club does is absolutely <laughs> brilliant. But Dave, this first half was was excellent. Uh, uh, it was brilliant. It was. I, I think. Uh, I mean, you, we, we say that seem to be saying it every other week now. I don't know, but certainly the best forty-five I've seen since well, I've seen this season. I think we were absolutely superb. Just, just uh, you've been picky, I guess. Sometimes the final ball, particularly. Not particularly because that's where generally we create these final balls, but Donassian and Burns down the right. Sometimes you think, and is this being really churlish? I don't know, but their final ball could be a little bit steady and a little Dave, bit. Dave, can know. I throw in my constant? On. It's League One. Yeah, well, good point. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, but even so, you know. Um, no, I know, I know. But I, yeah, I think sometimes the people, sorry to interrupt you, Dave. I think sometimes oh. we got we got a question actually about Burns, and I do think you need to remember. These are third tier players. We always use, yeah. after our years in the championship, we'd always <laughs> say they're either going up to the Premier League, they're on the way down, or they're in purgatory forever because of a key weakness that won't see them play at the top. Extrapolate that down another uh, yeah, another division. Uh, yeah, so good continue, point. Dave. And it's not, yeah, I guess, you know, you, I, I don't necessarily mind those balls, but it seems to, seems to happen a lot when they are tight to the line and they're thundered across as, as hard as possible. <laughs> but, you know, then we'll, we'll get onto the goal and there's a prime, there's a, there's a prime example of perhaps how it should be done. That's not right to say that. But if I, yeah, that's my only, my only comment. But yeah, we were superb. I mean, Morsey yesterday was, bloody warrior, wasn't he, Craig? He was just unbelievable. Um, Backinson again. Backinson's a funny one. Backinson's one of these players in midfield who will lose possession almost carelessly, and you think, oh, Christ. And insanely, he'll just win it back straight away. He's got a hell of a knack for that. And Yeah, he, he's, he's really grown into it. But, yeah, you know, the first half yesterday was, yeah, just lovely football. Um, you know, Selena getting on the ball, which we like, and Luco. There was a couple of touch from Burns. I mean, we just saw that crazy. I think just before half time when he took that ball out of the air, you think, my goodness me, just, in, yeah, just everything about that first half was, was, was great. Other than, um, yeah, I mean, McKenna's right afterwards. We should, perhaps should, yeah, could have been easily two or three up. What, what, what do you think, Craig? Well, yeah, what it did is it, 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 if you take the last 40, the last half, the second half against Oxford and put it together with the first half from, yeah, from yesterday, it was you couldn't not have had a more perfect ninety minutes of football, basically, because mm. you know we just carried on from from the second half performance at Oxford and say, as Dave said, that Burns touch, he sort of intentionally made it more difficult for himself by turning around 
and dr making it come over his shoulder to pull so it, it was out. A, of the it was a spinning ball as well, so it was a high clearance. So the ball was spinning and it dropped over his shoulder. It was just, and he had a defender behind him, and he kept the defender, up, you know, kept the defender there. Ridiculous, absolutely but then, ridiculous. He, but he did that. You know, the amount of times Selena just took the ball oh. out of the air, just drops on his foot. The yeah. so, a Luco does it. You know, we've we've got and Dave said about the about the performance and and the the display in itself. We just look such a good team, don't we? From yeah. From no, and we we went years of seeing all these teams come to Portman Road and be well coached and well drilled and know what they're doing and know where each other are going to be in certain situations. Craig, That's especially what's... at this point in the season, this is yeah. where we would get found out for not being well coached. Where maybe Look. in those first twenty games, you know, the break and the quality would see through, and then the good coaching would come through in this part of the season, and yeah. and we'd be left behind, wouldn't we? Yeah, That's I mean, fair. they were they were no mugs. You could see that they were no mugs. We were, I think, our cause was helped slightly by we said you know they've gone you know obviously certainly these six games won six on the spin hand conceded they lost Bolton the the middle of the center the, the middle of the center yeah. backs um after about what 25 minutes Craig I think so they had a re they had a reshuffle there so that I think did help but we look we're playing well before that you know we were dominating possession and just it was just free flowing football yeah, it was really, really easy on the eye. Lovely to yeah. see yesterday. I think I think Norwood fancied Critchlow when he came on, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he, fancied, he, he, did. he took a yeah, he took a liking to him as soon as yeah. he came on and he, he went to look for him every time there was a, a ball coming up the up the pitch. He was looking to sit on him, I think. Yeah. Just bring the bring the numbers up for the first half before we talk about the goal. It is it is very, very good. And you know, obviously again, I hope we've done all the mitigating factors um in respects of you know, players missing, etc. But I mean, eleven shots in the first half, eight shots inside the box, zero big chances conceded, zero shots on target, four corners to one. Um, again, I'll reiterate: us podcasters get accused of getting carried away and exaggerating. I hope we're not. Um, Craig, I paused this one a couple of times on um, on the Gillette show. Actually, Joby Mac enough was very. Um, very full of praise. And I know he's one of the pundits that watches a lot and is actually very clued in in terms of uh, League One stuff. This was one of these ones where in years gone by, I think the flag would have gone up for Morsi, but with the obvious changes in interfering with play. I mean, he, he, I, I may be wrong, but um, the, the ball obviously goes to Norwood and Morsi's with him from Selena. And then do you want to take it from there? Yeah, it was, it, it, it's a nice ball, isn't it? And if you take it back a little bit further, I think someone... Yeah, Someone's um, put it on Twitter in terms of the whole um, piece, po the whole portion of play. Crikey, get that out on us. <laughs> Just check me teeth. Um, it actually, it, it starts off quite a way back and it comes across the pitch. It goes back towards the Cobble stand. It then comes back towards the, the West stand. Um, and Selena then chips a lovely ball down in, in the channel through to Norwood, who takes it in his stride. Um, and he's then got Critchlow on him, hasn't he? And he's, as Dave was saying, that, I mean, Dave was saying there about him uh, looking to sort of target Critchlow. He's strong, isn't he? He holds Critchlow off and Critchlow's trying to get to him, um, isn't able to, um, drives it into the box. Uh, and Morsey's piling in, um, as he's as he's now got license to do, um, and, and bundles it in a couple of yards out. It's just a good goal and a good... It's, we were talking about it where, where we sit about you know the the strikers maybe not scoring as many goals now. We can't argue that the midfielders aren't scoring the goals at the moment. You know it's it's sort of flipped on its head, doesn't it? From earlier in the season where we were crying out for a midfielder to score a goal, um, they're the ones that are now carry the load. Dave, yeah, no, exactly as Craig said. Um, <clears throat> you know we just haven't had in recent seasons central midfielders. Any of our central midfielders just wouldn't have been in that position in recent seasons, as Craig said. You know, Morsey's now got license to license to get forward, and he's you got quite so a good well. chance to mention Scuggles here, Dave. Scuggles, <laughs> the Scuggles axis. Um, <laughs> but um, no, yeah, yeah, and Craig's right. Norwood does well because Norwood is a lovely ball for him, Selena. Norwood, yeah, you know, they say takes it down in one, and he sort he's got Critchlow there where he wants him. Norwood strong, and it's a clever ball because it's not it's not like one of those balls are his first to Burns or when you know when Danassi when they're fizzing it across in a straight line it's a reverse pass because he's, he's at the line and um yeah great great support play from Morsey and richly deserved on the um you know on the first half performance because you know we have we have Dom I don't think we've played as well in some of the um games you see at home you know first half um but um yeah you know our, our overall play just deserved the goal and yeah deserved more than one probably first half 
To be fair to Plymouth, sorry, Ben, to be fair, fair to Plymouth, first 15, 20, they had a lot of possession, didn't they? But they didn't really do too much too much with it, as as the stats prove. But, um, you know, they I like, weren't quite... I quite like the left back. He didn't get forward that much, but he had a lovely left foot. The left back had a left foot like Gillespie, I think. Like velvety left foot, Ben, you'd have liked that. Oh, yes. You love a left foot, don't you, cool. Dave? Um, well, we'll stick with you then, Dave. Um, so, look, I, I wasn't at the game. Um, everybody else everybody else was. Have have children i know you i know you guys i know you guys have been there but um my brain is immediately going it doesn't matter how well you're playing if you're playing a good side you know as the game goes on they'll you know game state changes and they'll have nothing to lose and um push on did did the nerves kick in did the sense of control i know was there was that big okay. miss by uh burns but i think that was up in stoppage time, possibly. That was a step. No, took me through the, the it was second a weird, half. It? It how, was weird, how, was the, how was the control? Yeah, I, I think it was always there. The first sort of 15, 20 minutes was a bit, it was scrappy, a bit wasn't flat, it? wasn't it? Yeah, a bit yeah. flat and scrappy. Look, we didn't. Yeah. I say we took our foot off, but obviously that, uh, you know, they they were got at. You know, you'd think the, the coach got to them at half time a bit, and um, but did they really threaten this in that period? No. Um, so it, yeah, just a just a bit flat and um, flat and scrappy, and probably I think we made the substitution. So it was um, obviously Bond for Norwood and Chaplin for a Luco with oh, 25, 64. 64. There you go, twenty five minutes. And I think we picked it just before then. I think we picked it up again, but I think we we, we you know, that gave us another that gave us another impetus. I mean, Chaplin came on and just shows the embarrassment of riches we got there. Some of his touches yesterday were just absolutely sublime for goodness sake i think someone talks about it in the tweets don't he a couple of throws to him and he just swivel swivel volleys passes away you think oh my god you know it's ridiculous <laughs> at this level but um yeah and then i think once the substitutions were made we 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 sort of gained control again yes they got a couple of corners near the end and yes the keeper came up and you think is this bloody Oxford deja vu sort of thing, but yeah, you know, keeper came and caught them. And what they didn't show on the highlights, I don't think they showed on the highlights, was virtually the last kick of the game. The keeper comes up, the they corner's it clear. Sky, yeah, it did show it on Sky. I have to like yeah. seen the Sky highlights, and it, we're all going, God, God, God! It just sort of rolls off. I don't think it's good. And in the, in the end, defender sort of gets there just in front of the line. But yeah, I think you know you always got that nervous stuff going on after what happened at Oxford. Any, especially Dave, the anyone can stick a decent cross in and get first contact on it at any point yeah, in the I, game, especially when you're chasing and you've thrown everybody up. We can't. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> no, no, good, point. good point. Although the corners, Selena were taking them yesterday, generally, were, I thought were, we didn't, not that we got ahead at goal on them, but I think they were pretty good. There weren't any, you know, first defenders were missed and stuff. But no, I think just just, just general good control. And um, oh, for goodness sake, that Burns miss. Well, oh my God, the play from Selena for that. Well, when you saw that, played that back countless times, what a goal that would have been. Holy moly. And it was a, it was a surprise he didn't, win because he's been in that position. I just right, expected how many, the net how many times. Bold, yeah. for God's sake. But um. Yeah, yeah, at that point, you think Selena, and you, you look at the little passages of play from Selena and the little sort of nuggets of play from Selena, and you think, God, God this guy is so much on a level above, so much above this we, level. Uh, Dave, we, we knew. Well, I, we knew that. We knew that from um, remembering what five years ago, his debut, I was at Luton and seeing his first touch and thinking, oh, Okay, um, <laughs> oh, right. There's there's something there's something well, there if someone can work with this. And I was at, um, Craig was probably there. I was at, I've done a few of there. I was at QPR when he saw was, suddenly, yeah. suddenly picks a ball, cuts inside, and buries one in the far corner from twenty yards. He's, okay, <laughs> this might yeah, be a player. Needs, needs to piece it together. Yeah, and you? I think I think so. I think, and again, I think someone we get. There's a tweet about it, isn't it? I'm pretty sure there is. I don't know if we're going to cover that, but yeah, he was going to benefit. You know, look, fingers crossed, because he would be a. Again, someone said this on the tweets this week. A marquee sign. He would really would be a statement of intent if he if he signed. And um, yeah, you know, if he's here full and fit pre-season without COVID and the other issues he had last season, flipping heck, I mean, absolutely insane. Craig, can I focus your analysis more on what Kieran McKenna said afterwards? Because I'm I'm confused as a as a layman and not an expert like he is. He was talking about. The difference between us and a really, really good side is, you know, scoring from set plays and scoring half chances. And um, I'm not entirely sure as a fan how how that how that stacks up. You're you know, you're trying to create good moments and good chances. And 
he's talking about the extra that Dave was mentioning. It didn't go didn't go two nil at any point, and then of course if it goes two nil, you the game gets that much more stretched. What, what, what does he mean when he's talking about you know scruffy goals and whatnot? That 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 I'm struggling to reconcile that. I think I know what he means. Well, I think he's, he's, I suppose it's what he's saying is that you can you can only score so many perfect perfect goals, can't you? Um, in terms of last week at Oxford, for example, was a perfect example. Wasn't it two passes, two good um, direct passes, and, and the balls in the back of the net. Whereas I think he's probably looking that even if you're not on top, you can score out of nothing. You, know, you as you said, Ben, you'll get a corner, you'll get it in, you'll get first contact, you've scored a goal. Oh. Thank God for that. We can now settle into the game or we've now got a cushion in, in the game. Um, I think and, and it's just probably getting more entries into the box and therefore by by virtue of having more entries into the box, you do get a scrappy goal because it's bounced off a defender's knee and fallen to, to Chaplin. You can just slam it in the back of the net sort of thing. So I think it's probably looking at, at that from, as, as you said, more set pieces goals just to get us on top of the game, get us consolidated in a game because, you know, we're not remarkable um, statistic from from set pieces. I'm sure in terms of, of what we <laughs> what we don't manage to score compared to compared to the ones we've conceded recently. Do you agree with that, Dave? Um, I think I think Craig's explained it quite well. It's you know when a chance does come off a defender's knee, being able to scoop that one up as well, yeah. rather than yeah, scruffy relying goals. on pure pattern of play the entire time. Yeah, it's scruffy goals. You need that. Craig's right. You're not always going to going to score the you know the perfect the perfect goal so yeah certainly goals from set plays are vitally important well at any level but especially especially at this level um and like i said i think the deliveries are, the deliveries have been better there was a couple i died oh, i had money on burgess one nil yesterday there was a couple of corners <laughs> in the first half there was one he was really frustrated selena took one and you could see him sort of homing in gamble ready, aware, and, 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 yeah the defender just gets it and you, you can see he doesn't get burgess doesn't even get contact on it but it's a really if you follow the ball it's a really good clearance by the defender you see burgess is running back with his head in his hands because that is right on his head but yeah you know um you, you need to score your fair share and we just we yeah we don't we just don't score enough i think the qualities of the set plays are better we're certainly getting better um for we didn't have any free hardly any free kicks yesterday right. in around but evans was certainly um that that was certainly an improvement in his game before he got injured so you know we've got the players christ selena or luco you know we've got players technically gifted enough to chaplin gifted enough to deliver it's just um yeah turning those into goals really so Burgess was Burgess was probably walking running back with the head in his hands because he knew there was six pounds fifty that isn't going to go into <laughs> exactly. the, uh, the Bloody... diamond coffers. I, I know, I know exactly. That could have been Ben. That could have been a packet of nappies for Christ's sake for Grand Child oh, Diamond. We're on, we're yeah. on to four. We're on to four plus now. Woo-hoo! How about that? Four yeah, plus, um, blimey. Yeah. Um, right. So we've had lots and lots of fun talking in isolation about the game, which was great. Now. I know I've been babbling on here saying to people, stop looking at the league table. You drive yourself mad. We were obviously, when McKenna took over, we were 10 points off and I think sixth place had a game in hand. And I was talking to Seb post-match. Since that time, MK have done 38 points in 17 games, which is ridiculous. We're going to have done 34 in 16 um, Rotherham have done 33 in 16. And up until yesterday, um, Plymouth had done 31 in 15. So essentially, um, the f- real mega frustration here is we're chasing teams in that top six. We're scoring two points, but we're now over two points per game, 35 in 17, which is so, so impressive. But I've just reeled off four teams that can equal that and had a 10 point head start. So um, as much as we're sitting here and we're very happy with you know the the level of performance the run is fantastic and maybe commensurate with the level of player that came in during the summer we get we get that as well maybe there was a sense of underachievement but the the frustration is absolutely real I'm gonna bring the I'll bring the league table up in fact um and just <laughs> Um, the, the whole term, I think Joe said it well, Dave, in terms of running out of road, 64 points now from 40. So even if we continue with the two points per game for the remainder of the season, that will land on 76. And you look, <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday have got 69 with seven games to go. <laughs> Are Sheffield Wednesday going to score one point per game or fewer for the last six games? Probably not. Um, so um, this sense of optimism 
comes with a sense of frustration, Dave, doesn't it? Yeah, we're going to be. We are. We're just going to be short. I mean, it's in, it's, it's incredible. Um, you look on the BBC. It's quite interesting. If you look on the BBC um, Football League One site, it's got the you've seen. It, it's got like the last five. I think it's the last five games, and the wins, draws, and losses. And the wins are shown. In, um, sorry, the wins are shown in green. The losses are shown in red. And virtually for the top. Well, yeah, from us up top nine. Um, in the last five games, there's only about three. Reds on there, and one of there's those. More, was yesterday. Dave, there's more green than Snoop Dogg's <laughs> pre-Super Bowl dressing room. <laughs> exactly, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just a freak, freak season, and yeah, it's well documented. We're going to pay for that. We are going to pay for that slow start, and I know, frustratingly, you know, although the football's been brilliant lately, just yeah, Cheltenham at home, you know, the last. I know Welcome. it's gifts and butts and. You know, yeah, Morecambe and, you know, you take another four points. My God, things would look a lot, things would look a hell of a hell of a lot closer, obviously a lot closer, a lot better. But yeah, um, it's going to, I think it's ultimately going to end in frustration. However, as a great, someone once said, take one game at a time, one <laughs> game at a time. That's all you can do. It's it's difficult, Craig, isn't it? Not like Dave says, kind of reasonably, oh, add two points on for that game, two points you on for that game. That would be 39 points in seven. So the standard that McKenna would have to reach, even though it's been very high, would be it would be something like, remember at the start of the season, Bournemouth, they had 40 points in their first 17 games, I think, didn't lose it. That would have been where we where we would have to be to to make this, wouldn't it, Craig? Yeah. And with a <clears throat> excuse me, and with a brand new manager halfway through a season, you know, picking up someone else's someone else's squad. Um, and this is quite interesting, and I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times, mentioned it on Friday night, is that on TWTD, they've got a, a league table. It's sort of as you were talking about there, Ben, and you can put a date range in, so you can, the date that McKenna started through to now, and look at the league table, 16, 17 games. <laughs> and sort of as you say, we, I think after yesterday, we might actually be second, but we're going to sort of got a game in hand and could overtake us if they play the same amount of games. But over three months, we've only gained three points on Sheffield Wednesday. So, you know, how long is the season going to have to, if you're X amount of points behind, the season's going to have to be pretty extended for you to gain a point every month to catch the teams that, you know, you're, you've got to catch up four or five teams. Appreciate we've, I think we've taken 14 points off of Sunderland, um, who had a bit of a bit of a blip, but it just goes to show, you know, we're not even top of that, the league since McKenna took over because uh, these teams were already purring and haven't, as you say, just haven't let up. The one, the t- yeah, the teams that are in that top six since... December the 20, whatever it was, 6th, 7th, 8th, are the teams that are still above us on March the 27th. Paying for the crimes of um, earlier in the season, sadly, Dave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, you, you, know, you can't have a start like that. It was just, you know, just um, always playing catch up. Yeah, because all of you are saying, you know, well, we're only nine points behind. It's only three wins. Yeah, but the other teams are going to win those three. Yeah, you can't make out. You can't <laughs> make just. I can't get everyone else I to just, stop winning games. I, when I grew up, I quite liked the number nine, David Johnson, the first number nine, Paul Marin, <laughs> number nine. But I hate bloody nine. Hate it. <laughs> um, I just want to talk, and I don't want to be negative about this, um, Dave. There's this. There's this horrible thing in my head as a, as an Ipswich fan because we don't get nice things. But so everything is great now and the timing's great, other than you know leaving the, you know that ten point gap from when with the game in hand from when McKenna had uh, taken over. How do you keep this going through a window? And we've been discussing this, and I need to plug our leveler service, which is like, you're, you can now join the Blue Monday <laughs> WhatsApp group. Um, check that out. We've been discussing this in the in the leveler chat in terms of, look, will there be a couple of sales in the summer? Will a first team go to bring in a couple more? How do you main, because we know if you maintain now this into um, next season, we're going to be like QPR, right? Everyone last season, QPR got 46 points in the last 23 games in the championship. Everyone said, right, they're going to, they're going to go this season. How do you now maintain that through? Because this is promotion form, but um, if, if Craig's assertions about league one continue into next season, another three teams will get 90 points and, um, (laughs) you know, welcome to the party. Derby County, maybe, and 
uh, possibly Barnsley, you know, um, Peterborough, who probably signed some ridiculous striker as well. I, don't, I, I think so. I mean, I, I think you just got to look the different. Look, the difference in that you can everyone can see the difference in the coaching under the new, you know, under the new manager, under the new regime. So imagine a, you know, a pre-season with um, you know players having that under their, you know, under their belts. Um, obviously, there were going to be players going out. We've all sort of speculated on who that who that might be. There might well be. I, I mean, it's. <sighs> It's a strange one, you know, before yesterday, Norwood's a case in point, before yesterday, you look at Norwood and you think, yeah, he's, he's, well, we said this before, we said this prior to Christmas, he's gone, he's gone now. But you look at, okay, think we all think had Jackson remained fit, Jackson was probably, a, you know, a permanent, becoming a permanent fixture with the way the manager likes to play. You know, suddenly Norwood comes in yesterday, great display from Norwood, and you think, well, okay, um, maybe, maybe he'll still be around. So, you know, p- players will be going out, I think a couple of astute signings. Uh, I think the core, hopefully the core of the team will remain. I mean, you look at, you know, you look at players throughout the core of the team. I mean, Wolf and then has just been a revelation. Absolutely. Just looks a thoroughbred role. I mean, Robson's used that some phrase before. Rolls Royce, the defender at that level. People are going to be, you know, high, the clubs from higher up are going to be casting envious glances at players like him. But I think, you know, the cause of the, the, the you know, you keep the core of the team and we have got the core of the team. Um on you know fairly long term long term contracts, there's no reason why you can't keep this momentum going. You know, finish the season. Christ, if we can get six wins, brilliant. I mean, but if we can keep you know a largely largely unbeaten, um, why can't we carry that through into the you know into the new season? And however you carry that through into the new season, and yeah, you are going to be not that we weren't at the start of this season very much. We were the favourites at the start of the season, but you're certainly going to have that tag taken into you know taken into next season. So I think. Couple of astute signings, I think. Um, you know the way we're playing, and the way that you know the football, and obviously the the you know the new the coach getting a you know a, a reputation as we can see now as a and a, you know they talk about it on the EFL show on the Quest show every week now. You know people are talking about McKenna and what a job he's doing already. Um, you'd think that um, you know you'd be able to track if you are going down that route some more. Um, uh, you know, big, big, you know, loan, say big loan signings, but some loan signings from from maybe even Premier clubs. Are you as are you as confident, Craig? I'm I'm almost to the point now where if we're yes. going to run out of road, I'm looking. Um, and let's be fair about this: one of Sheffield Wednesday and Sunderland are still going to be here next season. Um, they're too far away from the from the you know the the top two, and uh, you know. If Derby keep Wayne Rooney, that will be crazy um, amount of eyeballs on them every single week as well, won't it? Yeah. Well, as, <clears throat> as you say, there's going to be three teams currently in the playoffs that aren't going to make it, plus two or three teams that aren't currently even in the playoffs that, that aren't going to make it. So there's still going to be some big teams in there. They're going to have teams coming down from the championship. I'm just interested to know which what teams we actually want out of our division <laughs> Next next season that we don't actually want to play next next year. MK Dons is probably one. I'd be interesting to see what MK Dons do next year, won't it? Because yeah. he's had such a fantastic impact, hasn't he, um, on them? Whether he can, now they're probably thinking the same thing that if we don't go up with the run that we're, you know, us guys are currently, and if we don't go up this year, can we maintain that going into into another year? So that'd be quite interesting to see how um, how yeah, they do. You, but no, I fully agree. Twine with as well. The the forward would yeah, good point. Will not not be there as as yeah, well. Yeah, very good. Say. But then, but then they probably thought that with Fraser last year. Oh, balls! We lost Fraser, who did everything for us. Yeah, wonder whatever became of him. Shall we get into some uh, Twitter questions? Uh, thank you, everybody, for getting your questions in at Blue Monday ITFC. And as I said, uh, probably not very uh, well. You can now join our Leveler service and chat with us regularly through the week. Some great chats in there, especially the. Uh, Tyree Simpson one. We were going back and forth on that. In fact, I wonder if we've got any, any questions on it. Uh, let's um, dive in here to the questions. Um, Dave, uh, this is from Daniel. Isn't it exciting to have a team that seemingly knows how to attack and defend? Um, you've. Uh, can I push back a little bit, um, just in the interest of conversation? Um, the balance there seems to be... Um, probably scoring nine out of ten on the defence and six out of ten on the on the on the attack at the moment, though, isn't it? In terms of the balance and the goals output. 
Yeah, I think so. But again, harping back, the old adage is, you know, more, the more clean sheets you keep, the more successful you're, you're likely. Yeah, well, yeah, it stands for it. You're likely to be. So, you know, that's what that's. And and I think hats off to McGreal. That's it started with you know John McGreal way you know, way back. Seems a long time ago. Now in December when playing the three at the back system. Um, and um, yeah, he's been carried it carried it through really successfully. But yeah. Yeah, it's it's an odd one. The goal scoring is a the goal scoring is an odd one. Obviously, at the beginning of the season, you're scoring goals for fun. I think we were the top scorers in the whole of EFL after about six, seven, eight games. I think. Oh, that so went a lot uh, further than that, Dave. And did it go a lot Northern further? Rodas of Stadium was the BTTS capital of the. Well, to be fair, nation, yeah, because we got it? six. Yeah, I mean, but again, I think Joe's Joe's alluded to that before. That was perhaps an outlier because four of those. Uh, eight of those came in two, well, 14 of those came in three games, didn't they? So it sort of balanced itself out. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an odd one because the chances are ch- clear cut chances being created again. You, you know, you think of the game yesterday and were there any sort of glaring misses? No. Um, like I said, I'd perhaps I've been a bit uber critical of those two or three uh, Dave, final balls. Sorry, I'm keeping interrupting you. Sorry, I normally tell go you on, off that. Big, big chances per game, 1.9. So yeah. it's actually pretty good. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I can't really recall that many. Burns one, uh, which one? one? Burns is one at the end. Will uh, be, will oh, be oh yeah, okay, right. Sorry, yes, that, okay. was, that was the average over the season. Yeah, yeah. Right, 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 per nine, spent, sorry. In terms of right at the end. Yeah. And 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 sort of Bond. Bond is a case in point. You know, throughout, I think I've said this before, you know, when Bond, going back, okay, months, six weeks ago, when Bond was sort of getting perhaps more more game time, was he, you know, were, were, were there glaring misses there? No, not really, because the, I mean, the chance creation perhaps wasn't there then. So, yeah, it's uh, it's an odd one, but um, it's certainly, for, uh, we're, we're sort of building from a really strong base, aren't we, for goodness sake? Yeah. And that's what, and that's, as we're sort of talking about taking momentum through the summer and pre-season, you'd, you'd probably think that that's obviously what they're going to major on in in the pre-season is, is those patterns of play in the final third, yeah. getting more people in the box, getting better quality in set pieces as well that's and you say Ben that we're probably currently a nine in in defense and a six in um attack I think that's fair just, um, probably a seven in you just want both yeah, as an eight a bit like, both as an eight didn't you and then you you know just tail a little back on the on the defensive stuff and bring the attack out if you've got both solid eights you're top two I'd have thought you would yeah. have thought um Craig you're going to tell me off because you're going to get another dire question it's just the way it's un it's just the way it's unfolded here um this is FPL switch uh did KD embarrass himself yesterday with the Humphrey shirt could his agenda uh this is FPL switch's words not ours um actually end up hampering Humphrey's progress jolly not no I wouldn't th- I don't think McKenna's that kind of guy is he crikey I think and we were talking about this ourselves uh, yesterday in, in the in the fan zone, actually, which, to be fair, was absolutely rammed yesterday, the fan zone. They had a big screen up for the England match afterwards, and beforehand they were showing Mariner highlights, they were showing Oxford highlights, they were showing Joe Sheehan interviews and stuff on this big screen in the fan zone. So just uh, call that to the people that arranged that. That was, that was all good. Um, now, we were talking about this beforehand, actually, saying that, about the sort of players that McKenna's going to bring in. And McKenna's an academy product in himself, isn't he, from a management perspective? And there's no reason why a manager would bite the nose to spite his face in terms of not picking a player that they think is good enough. And that's that's the key, isn't it? It's whether McKenna thinks he's good enough, not whether Kieran Dyer thinks um, Humphreys is good enough. I'm sure if McKenna thinks he's good enough, he'll be playing first team or on the bench, like Elkin Baggett was on the bench um, yesterday. So... Um, we know, as, as Dave said about Kieran, we know what he's like. He's an emotional guy. He wears his heart on his sleeve. Probably too emotional for his own for his own good sometimes. Mm. Um, might not have been the wisest thing to do yesterday, but you know, guy can do what he wants, can't he? He's not, you know, he's not pushing it in anyone's face. He's just, you know, just a little nudge, taking the Mickey a little bit. Fair play <laughs> to him if he wants to do that. Then who are we to who are we to argue? Um, Dave, um, this one I'm interested in. Uh, Chris, who's in our leveler, actually. I love Wes Burns as much as anyone, but whether it's crossing or shooting, when will he learn a bit more composure? Before you answer, let me last give you week his... at Oxford. That, that's where he learned it. <laughs> it's fine yeah. last week. Well, let me give you some numbers. So, uh, 29 starts, 10 goals. Only three big chances missed uh, across the season by whatever um, Google, whatever sofa score defines as a big chance. Um, 
eight big chances created, uh, which has got him six assists. Um, uh, Chris is a very smart guy. Do you think he's been a bit harsh there, um, give, given we're talking about a player he's never just, played higher than League One, has he? I think I think what Chris is alluding to there is just like what I what I said earlier on, just those final balls where look, Craig's. Craig's dead right. You know, he got it exactly right at Oxford. Didn't he? And we've seen him get it, Christ, exactly right. Sorry, five or six times before. Identical identical balls where he makes the break. He gets his head up. You know, he picks the pass, which he did last week. I think Chris is just a bit frustrated. Is it frustration? I don't know. As of yesterday where <clears throat> he will get the ball, tuck the byline, and he will hammer it across. I mean, yeah, I, I expected him to score score yesterday. He just dragged it dragged it slightly right at the end. It didn't have an effect. Obviously, it didn't really affect the result because it was virtually the last the last kick of the game. But yeah, I, I kind of see what he's getting at in some situations. Perhaps he could be, you know, be a, a little more composed. But as you quite rightly said, we're talking League One, aren't we? Yeah, and, must... and, and and sorry, but just to say that exactly there, that yes, he is the League One player. And at the beginning of the season, 90% of his crosses were whacked across. Yes. Weren't they? They, they were. Yeah, yeah. Now, a high, as, high as, across as well. Yes, yeah. right yeah. into the end. But now, yeah. um, as the season yeah, good now McKenna's come in, he yeah. has, you know, that, that, it's not now 90%. It's sort of evening itself out. There are yeah. still little glimpses and rushes of blood to the head where he will slam it across the box. But they're getting far fewer than, than they were. And that, that hopefully can only um, continue with Improve. more coaching and more. Yeah, that's right, as they're getting used to the playing. It's still going to be there at the back of his head occasionally, but they are getting fewer, to be fair to the guy. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think we are being a bit churlish because, my goodness me, what a season that young man has had. Goodness well, it, me. it's got to be what an impact. top top five percentile in terms of right siders in in oh, league yeah. in league one for sure um i just want to point out with my championship hat on that there's something very strange in the championship where a lot of clubs most saleable asset plays down the right hand side you of said, their yeah. there's so there's jed wallace whose contract's coming up there's brennan johnson <laughs> of forest keen lewis hey potter, of course it is keen lewis potter um at hull dave i'm just going to mute you one set. Oh no, he's done it. Uh, Keen Lewis Potter at Hull. God, even James Bree. Remember him? He's like Luton's no, no, uh, no. key player. Um, so I suspect. Let me mute him a sec. There you go. I suspect that um, there will be some movement in terms of. Um, and we had a long chat about this on the um, on the leveler, didn't we? There will be some to in and fro of right sided players in League One. And don't get over protective. I know people go, we're never going to sell him. We're only going to sell him for eight million now. But I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you that there will be movement in right-sided players, um, especially if Forrest don't go up. It'd be interesting to see if if anybody does make a move for him. And we'll never know. But if no one does, the reasons why they wouldn't, because interesting. He, he doesn't he doesn't actually have a trick in him, does he? If you know what I mean, in terms of a right, he's he's pace, he's directness. He's, as you know, as we've just said, he's occasionally um, slamming the ball across the box. But I don't know if you can teach a guy of that age a trick. You know, he just he just doesn't have any locker. But he does have the touch, as we spoke about earlier. Christ, he's got a hell of a touch on him. He's got the pace. He's got strength. He keeps going for 85 of the 90 minutes currently because he's you know, had a hell of a long season, poor fella. He's scoring goals. He's creating them. So, you know, he, he ticks a lot of boxes. I just wonder what boxes he wouldn't tick. That wouldn't take him up to the next week. He's and his his stock is certainly rising. You, you see the oh, EFL yeah. show last night and Carl Robinson. Carl Robinson spoke really well about. I mean, you know, I know platitudes and stuff like that, but he spoke really well. He was on there last night and he said Burns the week before. He said second half they just couldn't work it out, couldn't handle him. I mean, yeah. okay, much perhaps a lot of that was to do with tactically how McKenna shaped the side in the second half. But he said, yeah, Burns just. Well, he said it which ran all over us, and he said, "Yeah, Burns was the pretty much the catalyst for that." And just in terms of that, I think for Burns, for, and I'm uh, sorry, apologies, but I don't know if we've got any questions on it. But for Burns to play so well, he's got the guy beside him, nice. player, of the se- player of the season, Danassian, to nice. my mind. He's just been remarkable, and he's allowing him to do it. He's also supporting him. He's up there in the 90th minute, overtaking yeah. him, undertaking him, getting into the box. And this is just central defender. Great. And I thought yesterday, again, you know, I know people on our leveler group were saying, quite rightly, Morsey was just up there yesterday. And um, Burgess, I thought, played really well. But again, Danassian yesterday was just phenomenal again yesterday, wasn't he? Unbelievable. What a season. And I, I think, you know... Tonight. A lot of candidates for player of the season, but he would get he would at this moment in time. I think he would get my vote actually. 
let us know on Twitter. My brain's been going 10 to the dozen. A great player who didn't have a trick in him. I'm sure there's someone who got right to the very top playing <laughs> wide. a lot of those. David Beckham couldn't really <laughs> dribble around. Right. He, he had a, he had a pretty not, good trick. I'm not comparing <laughs> Wes Burns. <laughs> oh, no. Twitter is going to have you. Twitter's done it now. You done it now. All those free kicks one. about uh, 30 yards yeah. out. Get on um, with awesome. Me. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. <laughs> At Blue Monday, ITFC. And this is the depressing bit where we look and see what's going uh. on next week. So Cambridge at home looks preferable for us. Wickham have Doncaster at home. Sheffield Wednesday have Wimbledon at home. The one nice fixture there for us, if I'm still... I keep telling people to not. I'm such a hypocrite, aren't I? Plymouth are playing Oxford yes. next week. So one of them is... The MK have got Shrewsbury at home. Uh. Oh, yeah, dearie me. Anyway, um, but... Uh, Craig, next week against Cambridge, just keep things going. Clean sheet win would be lovely and try and work towards mid to high 70 points total. And, um, you know, if if that means we finish eighth, ninth, seventh or whatever, then so be it. Yeah, I think I think probably for next week, you, the concern I'd have is you, you look back at the Cheltenham game, you look back at the Morecambe game, don't you? You know, Cambridge aren't going to be coming to us tomorrow and playing like Plymouth. You know, no. to be fair play to Plymouth, there was not a sign of stop, you know. No, not at all. No, it, was, it, was it? Wasn't there wasn't any game about. yesterday. Great, yeah, it was a, it? It's a and good that's game. A, that's a, a Lovely third game. Division, a third yeah. division game you're watching yeah. there. And it was a, yeah. just a really great game of football to watch, wasn't it? I think and it, I thought the ref did well as well. The ref took did. part in that, kept it flowing, yeah, didn't he? he really did. Yeah. yeah. A couple of guys near me were saying they nearly applauded the referee off at the end of the match. Yeah, he's very he, good. He let a lot of stuff go. Um, and not, not you know, to the detriment of people's um, health or anything. He just, fair tackles. He wasn't falling for the, the silly tack, the silly fanes that falling over he was doing really well just one yeah. quick question to you ben if you don't mind i yeah. know you don't watch us too much but uh, how would this team do in the championship do you reckon from what you're hearing and what you're seeing if we do manage to make that leap is it going to be that they will, they'll sit nicely in the championship just by virtue of the way they're playing and coach well in terms of the durability that's a big um big tick in the box lots of teams in the championship play a three so there might be some matchups where you know it might be a bit sort of tense obviously we understand the financial landscape stupid so the parachute teams would still demolish us generally um we would lack that i mean you look down championship teams and you see a harry wilson or a dom solanke or a i don't know sorber thomas morgan gibbs why um ben brereton diaz with the there's a lot of teams will have players where they'd be like Premier League players. They would be way, yeah. way better than... But um, it's a start, having a pattern of play and a kind of young, progressive um, manager. So with my... The thing about the championship as well, and, and any league, Craig, is there's you're always reliant. Someone will always have a Anna Cerebralis. So there'll always be... There'll always be a Peterborough who, you know, really never can win an away game or Barnsley who go through three managers. And here's the big thing with the championship... In the next two, three years, how many teams are going to have points deductions as well? Mm. Especially post-COVID, with all the, um, we're going to have a lot of fun over the next couple of months. Well, not really, because um, it's not it's not my wheelhouse adding up um, financial spreadsheets. But surely there's going to be at least two points deductions next season. And yeah, yeah. N- knowing us, we'll 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 finally get up when all the financial stuff's cleared and the parachute payments are and removed all, and all, all of that. Yeah, and, and all very boring for you next season. Have to report on Norwich another ninety-five oh, points per month. Stop it! Oh, stop <laughs> it! They've got to mess sorry, it up. Ma- one. Sorry, mate. <laughs> They've got to mess it up. Uh, right, brilliant stuff, Dave. I realised Craig um, had mentioned the name that we should have mentioned way earlier in the show. Just finish off with a little few words on on Paul Marin. It was Paul oh, Marin today. Um, yesterday, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was Dave. it was brilliant, mate. Really well, reser- uh, really well, um, really well observed. I didn't, I must admit, I didn't make it to the fan zone. I was on the greyhound, and um, I think there was something going on in the fan zone there. Craig, well, Craig said they were showing a montage of his goals and stuff like that, and a minute's applause before the game. Yeah, much repeated. You could see our, me and you when we did our tribute all those sort of few years back, which Rich brilliantly added video to last year. I think that, um, yeah, the, the, just the complete player, complete all round. All round. If you if you if you want a prototype of a centre forward, an all round centre forward, there's your man. Outstanding. 
Brilliant stuff. And um, again, I'll reiterate, a great day, a great performance yesterday with um, some bigger picture frustration. Say goodbye, Craig. Yep, see you all. Uh, say goodbye, Dave. Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> get involved over on Leveller, um, Acaster for your podcast. YouTube, if you've survived this far, hit the like button. And we will see you, um, I think, in the middle of the week for the live show. Thank you.